Hey guys, Case to Top Branch here. Today we have a shop day and it was uh, a good chance for us to do a review on this bad dad. We posted a, um, a little short clip of this on our Instagram and people went nuts about it. This is our uh, Dinosaur Automatic Chainsaw Sharpener and today would be a great day to do a review of it, mostly because we have a, a whole bunch of chains we have to get done. So we're gonna show you kind of how, uh, how this machine works set it all up, do a chain on it, and then bring it to the field and uh, show you guys how it cuts versus a kind of semi-sharp semi, uh, semi -sharp one that's on the saw right now. So this is the T-Rex Automatic Chainsaw Sharpener. I think we've had it for probably like four years now. It's a great machine for if you have a, uh, if you have a tree service and we go through probably about Oh, 10 or 12 chains a week or so. We're really careful with what we uh, saw with them. Plus we deal with log lengths and stuff like that. So we're not constantly bucking trees up and stuff like that. Once in a while we'll find some steel. But I usually have about 30 or so chains in the truck. So as soon as we hit something or the chain starts getting a little dull, we take it out. Then we basically end up sharpening these guys in a big batch. So I do all my 3 8 my 3.25 chains, all those at the same time. This machine will go from a, uh, like a pole saw chain, which is your uh, 043 chains all the way to your three quarter inch uh, processor chains. When you're going from one size to the next size, it makes it so that way you have to adjust the chain a little tiny bit because the the center of the head has to be the center of the chain. So as soon as you get that larger pitch of a chain or that larger uh, thickness of your dogs, then you have to set the thing over or if you get a narrower chain, you have to bring it back a little bit. So that way the teeth are the same size on both sides of the chain. So as you can uh, probably gather, this is, this is the cutting head of it, which is what does your what does your cutting. This thing has a motor in it, and it um, oscillates back and forth. And you can set you can set the angle of whatever your teeth you want to have. We have it set at a 30 degree angle, and you can do your 25 if you're doing a lot of ripping. You can go down to your 10, or if you want to go 35 if you're all softwood or whatever. This is super easily adjusted adjustable for that. Then there's what they call a paw, and I'm just going to inch forward so it advances to the next tooth. You can customize it for all your different all your different types of chains and stuff. If there's an extra connector link where the two chains come together, you'll have to, uh, there's ways to make it so this machine knows that that is there. Um, but as you can as you can see, basically this would be spinning right now and it will sharpen this and it will go to the next one and it will slowly just go back and forth. This sensor is a tooth sensor, so when I advance it to the next tooth, you can see there'll be a little orange light and it will light up. That tells you if there's two chains in the same on the same side of the chain, so that way it knows it knows not to put the wrong angle on the next tooth. So if you're going from one chain to the next chain or a bigger chain to a smaller chain, sometimes this will have to be adjusted just a little bit so that way it can it can contact and be close to that tooth material. As soon as you get a big processor chain, this would have to move a little backwards. That way it knows if it needs to go one way or the other way. Basically, I'm gonna turn this guy right on. We're gonna show you how it works and I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna make sure we have enough space right here so you can, when you first start it, when you first start your uh, machine up, it's nice if this is not rubbing right now because um, that way nothing, it doesn't blue material. Plus, if your teeth are just a hair different, especially like if you if you use a hand file or if you use the timber tough or something like that, uh, uh, a bench grinder. Sometimes those teeth can be uh, a little bit different of an angle. So I'm just gonna advance it backwards just a little bit. Back this up just a hair. And now she's ready to go. Then there's all these different. You can tell the you can tell this machine whether to use the magnetic uh, or the automatic sensor back and forth, or if you put a magnet. I have a magnet right here as well, which allows me to put tell the tell the machine when to stop if you need to like miss a tooth that's not good or whatever. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later anyway. So we're just gonna turn it on. We're gonna we're gonna grind one tooth, go to the next tooth, make sure everything's good and then press the start button. And so I, I'm not touching right there, which is good. Here, I'm still not touching, which is great. I'm just gonna advance it just a little bit. And she should be good. One of the reasons why we ended up buying this machine is because 
uh, an automatic machine like this allows me to go and do something while this robot is working. And all I have to do is keep my ear out to say, and you can hear when it is done or when all the when all the teeth are ground to the same length because they will sound all the same. Right now, uh, this chain ended up getting uh, nicked on one side and one side of the teeth are worn out more than the other side which is why we hear this difference in uh in these teeth that were uh that we're grinding right now so if you're a one-man band or if you uh have a guy that's in the shop that can do this kind of stuff this is when you would have the opportunity to get one of these machines so that way you can do all 30 or 40 chains in a day while you're still maintaining vehicles while you're still picking up the shop going through gear all that kind of stuff but we're getting kind of close and I'm just going to dance it just a little bit more. Okay, and now you give it another, now you give it another minute or so. It should go all the way around. And then I'll come back to it and we'll check it out. So this machine will do about 30 cutter teeth a minute, um, which is so with this with this chain right here, uh, it's got about 32, 34 teeth or so. So that means in about a minute and a half, it does one revolution per chain. It's gone around about three, four times. So in about five minutes, uh, this chain is sharpened on one side. Now we just have to do the the raker gauges on this guy. Um, so there will be with this machine when you're taking if you're taking a big chunk of metal off There will be a little bit of a burr on top of the on top of the tooth But that easily just comes right off as soon as you take that cut and take as soon as you take these uh, Teeth and go right through the uh, Right through the piece of wood it that that burr ends up coming right off But now we're gonna do the raker gauges show you guys how to do that and then we're gonna put it on the saw There's a whole bunch of different ways to do this. I just have a little uh, vice over here Take this, so it's right about okay. Pretty close to being flat. It's kind of mimicking being on a bar. And I just take this uh, this gauge and I just scrape the tops just a little tiny bit. Make sure that that uh, make sure that burr is gone. And as you can see, if you look really closely right down, so that mount that is sticking up is the mount that I have to file off. And I'm just gonna file one tooth. So when I file this one tooth, I'm gonna put this tooth under the the other wheel that we have for this guy, bring it down so it just barely touches. And then that is now set for all the rest of the rake or gauges. And now I can just go and don't have to do anything. It will do all of them to the exact same height and then she's done. And so when I'm uh, when I'm doing a whole bunch of chains, then I would be doing this while the while the machine's running right now. You just can't hear much when I'm. <laughs> you can't hear much for filming while we're doing this, but it's basically all we do. So this is the wheel that uh, that does the grinding on all the cutter teeth. It's their it's Dinosaur's custom uh, ABN Cyclone wheel here. They can do any sizes and do it so that way you can uh, for all different types of work. But we end up using this guy, and this is still the original. This is still the original uh, wheel. We have two of them basically, and it's been four years. And if we do. 30 chains, uh, 30 chains maybe a month. Plus we also use this for our old sharpening service as well. So I don't know how many sharpen chains we sharpen for that and they're still going strong. Once in a while they get a little dirty and you just put a little cleaning stone on there and it just brings them right back up to life. They're super high quality. They don't vibrate or anything like that, which is why they have these gussets and stuff in them. As you can see from this wheel, there's a profile that I've ground into it. This allows there to be a right contour on my rakers on the chain. So that way there's not there's not like a, a, a bump or a, um, uh, a corner that would hit when I'm when I'm using this the saw in uh, in a piece of wood or whatever so let's put this guy on the on the machine uh, change my angle on the top of it and then we'll press the go button so basically let's see if I can get this off it's a lefty thread with this guy This guy on here. Now, now we have to change our head 
uh, up top so that way it doesn't oscillate back and forth it stays nice and straight it's now in the start position and I'm going to turn the head of this so that there is a little special special uh, place that you put this in that allows for the gears not to touch and there's this little triangle that's right here And once that's done, come back over here, press count reverse, and it'll cycle through the other side. And now I take my uh, Allen wrench, put it in here, and bring the angle to zero. And that makes it so that way it will not oscillate back and forth, it will stay straight the whole entire time. Uh, that's why you don't do one chain all the way through, because you'd have to change, do this whole entire uh, change of the machine between every single chain, which is why we go through, do all the teeth, and then we do all the rakers. It allows you to, like if you had a sharpening company, you would do all your chains on a Wednesday or whatever. So all the chains that came in, you do all your chains, and then they, you would do them all in big batch. Like that's how this machine works the best. Um, so that way, that way you don't have to keep setting up all the time. So now we're gonna throw this right in here. And we're gonna spin. This machine's all set up, ready to go to do our uh, do our rakers. Okay guys, time to do some rakers on this guy. So what's happened is I went over, I filed this one right here, and we're going to get this one all set right up. And we're going to inch forward, come on over. This guy's gonna have to crank up a little bit. Basically now I have to get my my depth gauge, my raker right here in the center of this profile that I've ground out because I just barely have to take a little tiny bit off the top because this is a newish chain so I don't have to take much of the shoulder of this off because my, my tooth hasn't been ground that much. So let's bring the head down a little bit and you can, see, you can see that I have to advance the thing forward just a little bit. And I can't advance it forward when the head is all the way down because this tooth is clamped in here by this, by this device right here. So I have to back the machine up just a little bit and you'll see, you'll see the tooth change just a little tiny bit and it allows me to crank it forward. There it is right there. I'm going to go forward just a little bit more. Right there, okay. And now you make sure, because sometimes when you're doing this, if your t head is up and I go to adjust it and I come down, it will take too much on my rake gauge. So you want to make sure you're all the way up, you have some space. You play around with your advance forward, advance backwards buttons to make sure you're at the bottom dead center, basically, of this guy. I'm going to turn your grinder on. I'm going to shoot some sparks right at the camera. This goes right in, and right there, I have to just barely have to take a little tiny bit off. So now we're going to advance to the next tooth, make sure everything's going to work properly. And that's it. I'm taking very, very little off, press the start button, and she's going to go all the way around. Well, it's much faster than hand filing I ever thought it being. It's a little coarser of a of a cut of a grind than a hand file would be, which is one of the reasons why there could be just a tiny bit of sharpness difference between the hand filing and between grinding like this. But when you say, well, what's your time worth? I would rather be able to do things while this machine is running. Right now, I'm filming while this machine is running. Right now, um, a lot of times we'll end up working on machinery, all this other stuff. And I can easily, I can easily throw a magnet on this thing and it will shut it off. So if I know I want to go around once, I just put a magnet on this right here. Right there. And when that magnet gets to over my detector, it will sharpen that thing and then it will shut off. And so this is a good way to make it so that way you don't have the thing just keep on walking and keep doing its thing. And now it's done. You told the robot to stop. And when I come back, I can just take this guy right off and put my next one right on. Yeah.
made it so that way there was light, way less friction to me having to sit there 15 minutes, do a, do a, every 15 minutes to get another chain done because it wasn't worth my time. I would rather just go buy them for the amount of productivity that I was wasting. But with this, with five, like for five grand for this thing, pff, I wouldn't even blink an eye at it today because I have $5,000 for just an implement on a skid steer or whatever is, uh, is well worth it. So, um, let's, uh, bring this saw, bring this chain over to the field and we will, uh, try it out and see what we think. I'm doing some posted beam work, so I need to cut these to length anyway. Juice, 21 foot long. I got eight inches to play with. Okay. Okay. So this is uh this chain's been on the saw for I don't know two three jobs right now. A little bit of stuff on this side uh, when you're cutting stumps or whatever. So it's not really gonna cut all that good, but we'll uh, show you the difference between that one and the one we just sharpened. Two cookies and we'll do two more cookies with this chain. And if you want to see a review of this 500 leave it in the comments below. Uh, I just love this saw just for the power that it has when you're like in the cut. If you need a little bit more you just kind of rev it up just here. I especially love boring with this saw. Yeah. It's such a great saw for felling. It's not so much fun in the tree. It's a little on the heavier side, but if it's the weight of a, what? It's a 70 cc saw or something like that. So basically the weight of like a 59 cc saw. So you can't complain. Freshly sharpened chain. We're gonna see what we can do. Definitely felt a little nicer through the cut. Uh, my rakers could have went down just a hair more, but for boring, I bet you this is perfect. Yeah, no kickback. I can go almost. I can must try the attack side. Yeah, super, super good. That, um, and this is red pine, so it's a little on the harder side uh, compared to like a white pine or anything like that. So it means this would bore hardwood super well as, as uh, super well as it is. Um, great the machine does a great job. It makes it so that way uh, we always have all these spare chains all the time. We don't have to worry about hand filing because that's what the bane of my existence is hand filing a, uh, a, a a chain that you just hit some steel or whatever on the on the on the tailgate of a truck. Uh, it's the worst thing ever. I was just like, what am I doing this for? If you have a, uh, a tree service, if you're uh, out west fighting fires or whatever, they actually make this, uh, this machine uh, a 12 volt version of it as well. So you can have it on site as well. So if you have like a lot of processor chains, if you're doing some logging or whatever, you can have this uh, on your lunch break, just sharpening chains for you as well. Um, so if you have a fire department, if you're a tree service, basically of any size, a professional sharpener, or any, anybody that's doing actually have quite a few chains, it's definitely for you. For the homeowner that's doing one or two chains here and there, it's probably not worth it. But, uh, but all in all, it's a great machine. It allows us to have more time so we're not sitting there just manually doing it. They make a whole different, uh, they make actually a couple versions of this. They make a, a semi-automatic where it automatically goes uh, down and pushes. You just have to run it by your hand instead of having a motor inside of it run. Uh, that one's actually quite a bit cheaper. So you could, uh, 
so that could be a different option as well and then they make stuff for band saws and also those stuff as well but we'll do a super in-depth of how to basically a starter guide i think is what we're going to try and do as well um so that we'll we'll see if we can put a link in there when we get that uh, up and running but uh yeah so it's a it's a it's a great machine for the money it helped us helped us keep all our chains super consistent uh it made it so that way uh that way we can be as as more productive in the field and so we're putting more money in our pockets so yeah uh, tell us what you guys think about this review this review kind of uh kind of a quick shotgun review anyway um put that in the comment below remember to like subscribe do all that kind of cool stuff uh, wherever we're posting this it's going to be on instagram or uh or youtube as well and uh we'll see you guys on the next one take care